Hey, what up fam? It's your boy Norm, and I would like to welcome you to episode 66 of the Evangelical Norm. I just went through this and did the entire thing with the microphone on mute, because um, I had some issues trying to do another video, and it wasn't working, and I muted my mic and forgot to unmute it, and so here we go again. Um, yeah, I love to do a second take all the time. It's, it's it's fun and it's late so the maybe we'll end up just being a little bit uh, shorter than the last video which was just over 25 minutes so let's see if we can uh, make this a little more concise and maybe get it down to 20 shall we um, so uh, this week we are gonna just expand on last week um, Thursday was a huge day um, in media and social media. It was the uh, hearing where Dr. Christine Ford got to um, tell her story and um, undergo some questioning and so on. And then Judge Kavanaugh also got to um, lay out his side of the story, present what he considered his evidence be questioned and so on and we essentially came to a stalemate both seemed very credible both very impassioned about their their story and it's their story and they're sticking to it and so now luckily there will be an investigation there's going to be an FBI investigation looking into every all the accounts and the the inter interviewing the people who gave sworn uh, statements uh, under penalty of felony and so we're gonna see you know hopefully the, the FBI will do their job and we will get some truth to come out of this um, in the next week so we're at a place right now where all we can do is wait. We just have to let the FBI do their job. Uh, and hopefully we get answers. Um, but a again, we're in that place where we can't automatically assume that, that the accusation is false, especially not based on just on a political uh, affiliation which so many of this is, is divided down that line. You have the conservative side, you have the, the Trump side. I'll, I'll call it that because I don't consider half of the, most of those people conservative um, that are just absolutely, no matter what, Kavanaugh is innocent. There, there's just no way around it. Nothing you say or do is going to change their mind. And then on the other side, you have the hashtag me to the hashtag believe all women side that no matter what, these accusations are real and they don't care what lack of evidence or, or anything there is. Um, these accusations are real and Kavanaugh should be gone. And, uh, and her testimony on Thursday didn't really bring anything new and actually may have even muddied the waters a little bit more, but it absolutely, I don't think it changed anybody's mind and his testimony, although it, it I definitely think with the, the aggressive nature and so on, one, it didn't make him any friends on the left, uh, as many times as beer and so on was mentioned in the whole thing, it's become a, a, a meme in and of itself. Um, Saturday Night Live did a sketch on it, which I only watched about half of, and then I had to turn it off because nothing political. Saturday Night Live just isn't funny anymore. You know, I, I, I love Matt Damon as an actor, more along the lines of dramatic and action. I think he was, he's a, a much better Mike McDermott and uh, Jason Bourne than he is anything trying to be funny. And t 
to the point that I can't remember a, a character name of anything he did where he was trying to be funny. So, I mean, but Will Hunting and uh, Mike McDermott and uh, Jason Bourne, those are, those are names that are embedded in my mind because they're great films. He's a great actor, but he's not a comedian. And trying to be Brett Kavanaugh just wasn't funny. It wasn't. I think there could have been any number of better comedians and better writers that could have made that sketch a little bit better. I, I think I got about three and a half minutes in and I'm like, this is just stupid. So, um, I don't even know what that rabbit trail was all about, but Brett Kavanaugh has become a, a meme and unfortunately and so is Christine Ford and so I, I hate to even think about any people who are mocking her uh, and, and people who are mocking him too I mean maybe he's on other uh, platforms he's worthy of, of mocking and maybe on other platforms she is too but on this I, I think there's no joy in trying to make anything humorous out of this. I think we need to see truth. We need to see facts. And we need to have some kind of closure. But again, we're in that place where we just don't know. Both gave some pretty convincing emotional testimony. Both had some holes in their stories which muddied the water even more. But we can't just assume that the accusation is true because it's an accusation of sexual assault coming from a woman. And we can't assume that just because he's had a stellar career of however many years that there are no skeletons in his closet. We just have to wait. We have no choice but to wait. There's nothing more that we can do. I mean, there's so many people, even I, you know, initially got jumped online and, and started Googling the Safeway that she was talking about where she saw Mark Judge and, you know, and trying to figure out when did he work there? And, you know, because she was like, that's it. And then, of course, I'm finding the stuff that all these other people were finding that were saying, excuse me, she said the incident happened in 1982 and then there's all this stuff saying that that Safeway wasn't even there until 1986, which would put a big hole in her story. But then an article comes out from the Washington Post or somewhere, talk it from like 1985 or something, stating that that Safeway's been there since 1968. So, I mean, there's all this stuff. Let the professionals handle it. Um, let's not try this. I mean, it's, it's always going to be tried in the court of public opinion, no matter what. You know, this is America on social media, and the, the court of public opinion is generally more powerful than any evidence that's out there, for the most part. Usually, you know, the court of popular opinion it declares people innocent, guilty until they're proven innocent, and even if they are proven innocent, they're not going to back down. You know, we find ourselves, I mean, we have seen so many incidents of people who have been convicted of a crime that they didn't commit and years later coming out and, and finding the evidence that exonerates them. And most of those are based just on an accusation. I mean, our country has a, an ugly, ugly history, especially with, you know, and that this doesn't directly relate to, to issues of, of race, but in a sense it does. I mean, how many black men were lynched, executed, imprisoned just based off of accusations? And the same people who are saying that we need to believe her accusation no matter what are the same people that would say, well, you know, if there's an accusation, we can't just imprison a black man based off of an accusation, which I agree with. So let's let's set that platform straight. 
Um, but we can't convict a man of sexual assault, white, black, or otherwise, just based off of an accusation. Investigation has to happen. You know, ultimately, all of this could have been avoided if, and, and I, I don't even like going here because it's going to sound so political, but it's reality. If as soon as Senator Feinstein's office got this letter and got this information, rather than sitting on it for the amount of time she did, and now, and again, according to her, she was never going to let this out. This was never going to come to light, which I find very odd. I mean, I would hope that if I were a senator or someone in a position of power who had the ability to in, uh, initiate an FBI investigation, I would hope that if somebody sent me a letter stating that even before the guy was nominated, when he, he she, when his name was just on a list saying this dude sexually assaulted me in high school, I would think that could have been done very quietly, um, behind the scenes, under the table. Use your favorite terminology, but it could have been done completely maintaining Dr. Ford's anonymity, which she had asked for, and there could have been an investigation. And now chances are, again, in our day and age, something would have leaked. And if they found that he was guilty, and as he was quietly swept away from the nomination, it would probably be leaked that it was because of sexual assault or whatever. But her confidentiality could have been maintained an investigation should have happened i can't i cannot fathom a reason why nothing was done initially when the information was given and it was waited until somebody in this office leaked the information and now we are where we are one thing i do want to state and i'm sure you've all heard it but you know Supposedly, the, the issue at hand and the, the urgency behind this is that we have to get Kavanaugh or, on the conservative side, has to get a, a justice um, confirmed before the midterm elections in November because if the Democrats happen to take over, um, then we're, not, we're never going to get a Trump guy confirmed, ever. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is elections happen in November but they don't take control of the House or the Senate or wherever until January. So there is still time to get someone through. So investigation has to happen, and I'm glad that investigation is happening, and I'm hoping that we see truth. And here, here again, I come back to this place of no matter what the evidence shows, I'm willing to go with it. And I don't have a... I, I don't have a dog in the fight, we'll say it like that. Because, one, I'm an independent. I'm, ne I'm neither Republican or Democrat. Um, I, I'm not a Trump guy. I don't agree with half of what he does. I do like some policies that he has. I don't agree with Kavanaugh as a nominee for the Supreme Court because he's not the vote against Roe that I want. You know, for those on the left who are fighting so hard, who are so scared of Kavanaugh being on the court, hear this. He is not going to overturn Roe v. Wade. He is not going to be the vote to overturn the ACA. I just don't see that in Kavanaugh. I don't see anything in any of his case law or his, his decisions or opinions or anything that have been given, the, the little bit that I've looked into and researched. I don't see any of that showing that he is the vote, the conservative justice that we want. I would love to see him put aside. And another, I, I would love to see a Mike Lee on the Supreme Court or Ted Cruz or someone like that that I know, that I know is a conservative, that I know is going to be a vote against Roe, that I know is going to be a vote against the ACA. I don't think Kavanaugh's it. So, 
but I'm not, I'm also not because of that. I'm not hoping for the worst on his side. You know, I don't know. I mean, I just, I want to wait for truth to be revealed one way or another. I do have my own leanings on who I believe more in the, in the, in the hearing. And I'm not even going to say who or where I stand on that. I'm waiting for the FBI to come out. And I'm way willing to have my mind changed one way or the other. You know, I am willing to set up a, a booth that says, I believe, change my mind. And, and it's only the FBI and their investigation and what they find as they do this investigation that is going to be what changes my mind. Because between the sworn statements from her witnesses stating that they don't recall um, to his calendars that may well have been altered sometime in the last 36 years, you know, I just, I'm willing to have my mind changed one way or the other. And the FBI needs to do that. So I'm glad that there's an investigation happening. And as, again, we have to come back to the worldview. I'm sorry, I don't know why my nose is itching so much. And I hope it's not as distracting to you to watch me itch my nose as it is distracting for me to have to do it. But bringing this back to a Christian worldview, here is where we are. Dr. Ford has had to move her family because she's received death threats and um, just issues that have come up because of this. And so we as Christians, you know, again, going back to a completely non-religious foundation, secular, political, bipartisan, whatever, we have to wait for facts. We have to wait for an investigation to happen. Now we come to a Christian worldview. We have to pray for Dr. Ford and her family. Pray for comfort. Pray for safety. Pray for stupid people who claim to be Christian or conservative or whatever who are willing to make horrible statements and death threats, whether it be through social media or snail mail or whatever to stop. And let me just state this very, very, very plainly. If you claim to be a Christian and you are willing to make a death threat against this woman, no matter what the reason is, I mean, she could be a bald-faced liar, bold-faced liar, I can never figure out which one of those is, is the statement. I've heard it both ways. Someone let me know. Hit me in the comments and let me know what way that phrase is supposed to be said. Is it bald face or bold face? I think it's bold face liar. She could be a bold face liar and have never even seen Brett Kavanaugh before. And this could all be a political thing and blah, blah, blah. No Christian should ever make a death threat against anybody. And if you claim to be a Christian and you've made a death threat or an ugly statement towards this woman, check your faith. And I'm going to state that as clearly as I ever can. Check your faith. Because if you're willing to make death threats and, and crude statements about this woman, I don't believe you're saved. How's that? And on the other side, Judge Kavanaugh, his family has had death threats. I don't know that he's had to move his family, but they, you know, his entire career is on the line here. His reputation, if these are, if indeed these accusations are false, he still stands to, to lose his reputation. Because again, we see the, the, the stubbornness of, of, politics where those on the left no matter what this investigation shows are still going to consider him guilty 
just because of an accusation. So as Christians, we need to pray for Judge Kavanaugh and his family and for his daughters to continue to have the heart that they have if indeed the one turned to the other and said, let's pray for that woman. That's all we can do as Christians is we can pray for the Fords, we can pray for the Kavanaugh's, and then we need to pray for truth to be revealed and justice to be served. Because that's the God we serve. We serve a God of truth and a God of justice. And so if we are going to be Christ-like, we need to desire those things. No matter where that truth and that justice leads, and if it, if even if it take, goes against the side that we find ourselves currently on, we need to pray for justice. We need to we need to pray for truth and pray for justice and pay for, pray for peace and comfort for both of these families involved and everybody whose name has been drawn out of whatever yearbook and so on. Pray for them too, because in today's social media world. People show their ugliness so quickly, and, and, and it's horrible. Again, I live in a world where I say sticks and stones may break my bones, and you can say anything you want about me on my YouTube page, on my social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. You can say whatever you want against me. Now, if you use a whole lot of foul language and, and, and blasphemy, I'll probably delete your comment. I'm, I don't have anybody blocked on Twitter. I don't block people on Twitter. I've muted a few um, Trump parody accounts and a couple other people. I think I, I muted one guy who was coming after me with his dog's Twitter account. I don't talk to people's dogs. So I muted him, didn't block him. I don't block anybody. I might mute you. I might delete your comment if you use a lot of foul language. But you can say anything you want. Just keep the language down. I mean, you can you can make death threats against me. You can tell me to kill myself and off myself and blah 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 blah. I'm a dad now, so I might have to modify that. And you can't say anything about my kid. You say something about my daughter, you may get blocked, and you'll definitely get deleted, because I've seen some of those ugly statements too. You know. How many people have come on, on Judge Kavanaugh's scene and made statements like, I hope your daughter endures this? Because you know they're out there and you know they've done it. We've seen it. Social media is ugly. So we pray for everyone involved that they can have a thick skin like me, I would hope, on social media, and that ultimately that stuff would stop. But then we pray for truth. And we pray for justice to happen. And that's where we stand as Christians. So again, I, I, I feel like I'm just saying the exact same thing that I said last week. But now at least we have some hope and some light at the end of the tunnel to see if maybe we can get some facts and some truth to come out of this. Maybe we don't. Maybe we, we come out of this FBI investigation as confused as ever and we just have to hope for the best. I don't know. You know, it's an ugly, ugly situation. And all we can do as Christians is pray. Pray for truth. Pray for justice. Pray for the Fords. Pray for the Kavanaugh's. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until next week, and we can get some follow-up on an FBI investigation, Soli Deo Gloria.